Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to this online event, another one online event, uh, but a special partnership between ECHO and uh, Huawei, about women entrepreneurs and their businesses um, that they are building uh, in a rural connectivity. So we will be talking about, uh, we will be talking with three incredible women that are growing their businesses from rural areas in Algarve, in Alentejo, and near near Lisbon in in, uh, in another place. And uh, also um, about their challenges uh, and of course about the journey that is building a business um, uh, far from uh, big cities. Although we, we will also uh, like to welcome two other special guests. One of them is Isabel Ferreira, Secretary of State uh, for the Development of Inland Regions of Portugal. Hi, Isabel. And another one is, of course, Berta Herrero, uh, Senior EU Public Affairs Manager from Huawei. Hi, Berta. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. So uh, my first question uh, to Isabel and maybe to, to Berta that um, of course uh, has something to, to say about it is, is it too reasonable to talk about rural connectivity in a digital age? Um, or should we, should we talk about other terms or uh, connect this uh, rural um, universe to a better work-life balance, for example, or a better time management. Isabel. Good afternoon. Thank you for this opportunity and to be with all these incredible women. And uh, of course, it is very important um, the use of digital tools and the connectivity, including in the rural areas, because Digital tools must be uh, used to enhance our interior, our inland. And these are tools uh, that allow better than any other uh, to treat differently our territories. The interior of Portugal have uh, two types of different realities. We have uh, the one of medium-sized cities with some capacity already installed installed and a different reality, a completely different reality in more fragile territories and with more vulnerabilities. But um, in medium-sized cities, these, these digital tools will bring value to established chains, improving the efficiencies of processes, modernizing various sectors of activity, uh, not only in the digital sector, but also in many other sectors, such as tourism or, or agri-food or automotive or health. And, and fostering networking means forming consortium between companies, startups, uh, also uh, universities, research centers with improvements across all, all these territories. And it is also the, the digital tools that allow the dynamization of telework, mm -hmm. essential to attract people to the interior of our country, and that from there can work for any part of the world. Uh, also, in the most fragile uh, territories, uh, these tools can create proximity dynamics, so they are very powerful. Uh, they are very powerful and vital for everyone to have a just and also a happy life with access uh, to what is essential to, to all the services and, and everything that, that is essential. And these digital tools create logics of greater proximity in education, in health, in transport, in culture and logics that, that allow to cancel the effects of a huge population dispersion. Mm -hmm. So this will result from a small percentage of the population spread over a wide area, and therefore digital tools have a, a, a very powerful capacity to approximate people and also to approximate people to the services. Mm -hmm. So this is very important when we are talking about cities and also the rural, the rural environmental. Mm -hmm. Berta, is it uh, reasonable to, to talk about this uh, in our era 
And uh, what do you think about it? Uh, thank you, Mariana. Obrigada. Well, first of all, I have to thank you as well um, for organizing this fantastic panel. I have to say that as um, Huawei's uh, lead in diversity and equality at EU level is so encouraging um, to see an all-female panel. So congratulations on that. I'm also um, very, very grateful to be accompanied by so many uh, brilliant women here um, from all the speakers to the moderator, of course. So congratulations on that as well. Uh, but now, yeah, um, your, your question, um, was it is it good right to talk about rural connectivity um i would like to start by referring to rural as a term because i guess that we will have more time to talk about connectivity mm -hmm. uh itself later on look um george orwell used to say that um for change to happen the first thing was to change um the language right the way in which we refer um to concepts and actually by hosting this conference i think we're all doing these same things right um you know europe's villages and europe's rural areas are absolutely europe's most most incredible hidden treasure our rural areas not only host, you know, our grandparents or our relatives or our farmers who are providing food for all the continent, right? They also host incredible, incredible hidden champions, right? Mm -hmm. We are talking about female and male, of course, uh, but female entrepreneurs. We are talking about ICT developers. We are talking about incredible people doing a lot of things on ecotourism, for instance, on mm -hmm. the wine business, on um, very, very high quality products. So I, I, I like very much your question you know because i think that it's really important to give value to what it has it right and our rural world is full of value therefore yeah. you know i want to say here uh today that rural is the new cool of course <laughs> yeah that's why that's what i uh, i was thinking because I, I i was wondering if uh it uh, makes sense to to talk um the rural world and uh, separately, uh, like the rural is the new cool. It's not the rural, the bad rural. No, exactly. Look, I will give you one example. Um, last week, um, I was actually, I was very, very honored to be in Portugal, uh, working with our local team on the ground. And we went to visit some of our actually projects that we have on the rural areas and to check the connectivity and so on and so forth. And uh, we took this chance to actually film a video Mm -hmm. bringing value to the issue of rural connectivity, right? Showing how it works. Uh, we went there, we talked to women and so on and so forth. So um, when I posted this video personally, right, um, on my social media, people, uh, the comments were actually saying like, okay, thank you, Berta, for reminding us of how cool actually the rural world is. You know, we used to think that, you know, it's somehow backwards or it's somehow gray. No, 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 it has so much potential. So I think it is our responsibility, our business responsibility, and in Huawei we take it very seriously, um, to give value to, to, to our rural areas, definitely. And I, I think that the Madam Secretary of State will probably address this issue further later. Um, but I am also very thankful and very grateful uh, for Portugal as a country, as they will be leaving the EU in the next six months, for giving a lot of value to this, right, to the hidden champions in our rural areas. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. Amelia, you started uh, in EUOS a few years ago, um, and you, uh, on, on this process, you came back to Portugal from London, uh, where we, you lived uh, that uh, time. Um, how was, uh, why, why, why did you choose to move uh, to Algarve, to Algarve region? And uh, what were the main challenges you, you faced in this process, in this journey? Thank you, Mariana, for, for the invite, for being here. And uh, like everyone said, it's a pleasure to be in, in the middle of so many uh, wonderful women. And uh, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here discussing this with you. In terms of, of our move from London uh, to Portugal, it happened uh, naturally when we realized the business opportunity and, and the fact that we wanted to start the business we had and and our uh, our business is a technology based uh, business 
So for us, it was crucial to have connectivity wherever we would be based, and it was essential for us to have good technical resources. So that's why we considered Portugal, because there's a lot of good technical resources in, in Portugal in general. Um, we had a connection. We also, we are engineers as a background, uh, and we have that strong connection with, with the country still. So we decided to move. And when we were looking at where we could be based, uh, we knew we would be focusing uh, on, on external markets. No, majority of our sales, 99% of our sales are exports. So for us, it would be crucial to travel to the different markets and to build an international team. So we had essentially three options. Uh, from a transportation point of view, we had Porto, we had Lisbon, and we had Faro. That's where the airports are based. So that was our first logic when we, we chose the location. Mm -hmm. And then it was a matter of, for, for us, I, I was born in Lisbon. Uh, it would be easy to go back to, to Lisbon. But I felt the project itself could have a bigger impact uh, on a region like the Algarve. And there's a lot of interest in terms of the, the region itself to diversify from tourism. Mm -hmm. That's one side. The other side of the equation was the fact that the quality of life and the cost base that you can get on, on an area outside uh, the big cities is, uh, is there's a big difference in being able to do that and to attract international resources uh, at the back of that. So that was one, um, an additional reason why we then decided to establish ourselves in the Algarve. We still have, we, we later on created an office in, in Lisbon, mm -hmm. first connected with Startup Lisbon and then later on now with Lispolis as well. But the majority of the team uh, it's based in the Algarve. That's where the production uh, is done. And whenever we look for a location, the key thing for us is making sure we have a good connectivity mm -hmm. because we, uh, we are now present in more than 40 markets. I didn't mention what, what the company is about, but basically <laughs> uh, we do music servers and streamers. So basically it's, it's a replacement for, uh, for a CD player or... Uh, or for a turntable where you can store all your digital music, you can play streaming services like Spotify or Cobalt. So it's a, a highly technological uh, company. We do hardware as well as software. Um, and, uh, and, and we answer phone calls from all over the world. We support our customers all over the world, all based from, from the Algarve, as well as we do all the production uh, in, in the Algarve. So can, connectivity is, is key uh, when, when we decided to, to choose the location where, where we would be based. Mm -hmm. In terms of challenges, um, there's always a bit of, of challenges on, on being based in outside the big cities. More, not so much in terms of what the location can offer, but about the context of what you have in that location. So for example, the meeting we're doing today it would be very hard before the pandemic because a lot of people find just natural to go into a meeting room, to be together in the meeting mm -hmm. room. And that, that means that I would have to travel to Lisbon, even though very close, two hours distance. Yeah. But I would still have to travel. You are lucky in, in terms of uh, the, the, the dimension of our country, right? It's very easy. So if, if you would think about a much bigger country, the travel is, is even bigger. So in that sense, it's, it's easier. But I think... The pandemic brought a, a big acceleration in terms of, uh, of acceptance of doing things more based on digital. And I think that opens a huge window of opportunity in many aspects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, we, I, I, want, I want to talk about this later uh, in the end of our conversation because I, I want to talk to, to Luisa now. Uh, Luisa uh, created a bio business uh 40 40 kilometers from far from lisbon right yes. and um that is like a farm and the marketplace to buy products and you deliver that products at home right yeah, yeah so right. uh why did you start this business uh why far from lisbon and what were again your main challenges to to develop this um in, in, in I thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you, Hall. Uh, and I, I'm really in the rural, rural, rural world because I, I'm working on the soil, on the fields every day. 
uh, we grow a lot of vegetables. Uh, we deliver our vegetables to the city uh, and we are using the, the internet to, or the, the, to our website to, to sell everything. So it's really a, a connection between the, ro the rural, sorry for this world because it's a uh, world and um, I think we are in and it's it's cool. It's it's it's. Uh, I think it's cool to be uh, this this world. It's really a, a cool world, but uh, also very stressed because we we lived in um, to be here and to work uh, on the field and to to grow food. It's the most important uh, job as I can imagine imagine in the world because without food no world at all mm -hmm. uh, and it's really important that people um, take care of the, the of, of us as farmers I think uh, all the city should be more aware about our work and to have uh, add value to 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 us as, as farmers mm -hmm. um, and uh, yes, uh, we started. I started because I I I, I had a farm, uh, uh, and I decided to 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 make it uh, more close to the the, co the final customer because uh, it's it's hard for us as farmers to work a lot, and at the final uh, don't have the 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 right the the, the fair value for our work. Mm -hmm. So nothing better than that. Uh, um, go straight to the, the final uh, customer uh, and uh, so we we grow a lot of different vegetables we start with one box uh, 10 years ago and uh, <clears throat> um, it's uh, it's it's really um, amazing to to understand that how we 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 could grow so much uh, and grow in a very sustainable um, way because we we don't um, uh, it's it's, it's um, so um, it, it's really very pleasant or very grateful to understand that we don't need to to leave our main um, uh, uh, values to have a, a company a, a really sustainable company mm -hmm. and this what we have is a really sustainable company uh, with good results with a lot of work. <laughs> Many challenges, but uh, at the end, um, it's um, what we we are doing. It's 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 amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm really a passion um, in in love with all my work. <laughs> uh, I'm added to to all these rural rural. I, I hate this word because <laughs> rural. It's very difficult to say. Hey, rural. Rural. <laughs> it doesn't come to rural. rural. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel that when I read it. I feel yeah, that, I feel that better when I read the, your your newsletters because I receive the newsletters. So <laughs> it's it's very it's very obvious that you are passionate about it. <laughs> yes, I am. And, and, but I am from ten years to now because I, I ten years ago or twenty years ago I was out of the, I had a farm because I I I, I have it from my father. But uh, I was always running away from the, the, this this um, this world, this uh, uh, farmer world, because it was really very, I think, very gray, a gray world. Uh, okay, green, but also gray, because with now no no news. Every 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 year was the same. People are the same. No, we can now now we have a business that we are always. Um, trying to do better and better and um, but it's maybe maybe because you you create a brand uh, that that covers all the the areas you have because you have a restaurant you have the farm and yeah. you have these markets that you that you also sell sell the your your products it was really important to create the brand it was the most important thing because I think we can we sh uh, my, my my issue it was that people, wanted to have our lettuce, the lettuce from Quinta do Arnaio, the strawberries from Quinta do Arnaio, and not only a lettuce and not only a, a tomato, our tomato. So we need to have a, um, a brand mm -hmm. and it's really a very, in, we know that today we are a very um, trustful brand and this is what makes me so proud. <laughs> it's my, my, my most proud uh, 
I sorry because my English sometimes is not the best, uh, but I'm, I'm really proud about having this. Um, to know that we have uh, we are we are a trustful uh, brand. It, this mm -hmm. is uh, at, the, at the end, it's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Rita, in your case, in Malhadinha Nova, you build like an empire of uh, <laughs> wine and tourism in Alentejo region. So, uh, have you been part of this, um, we call this uh, exodus um, from, uh, that, that people that, uh, that uh, came back from the city and go to the interior or to rural lead, uh, areas? And um, how was it to, to change this mindset? To, uh, mm -hmm. to become, become like a like living in a, a region that is um, like more rural. More so rural. Time. So rural. <laughs> <laughs> How was it, and uh, what were your challenges? Uh, first of all, thank you, Mariana, for the invitation. It's uh, a big pleasure to be here. Um, Uh, presenting uh, my life project among uh, so many amazing women that I've heard a little bit already. And it's, uh, it's an honor for me to, to share uh, my experience in, in the rural ambience. <laughs> so I can, I'm, I can say that I represent, like Berta said, the new cool because We developed the project, me and my family, in one of the most, one of the less populated regions in Europe, which is a, the Alentejo, really to the south. So, uh, how did we start it? This is a family project. We were before wine distributors in the Algarve. So we have um, a distribution company and we have shops where we where we represent. Um, almost all the, the producers of wines in Portugal, in the south of Portugal. Uh, but to be in the, in the wine business uh, selling and to pass to the production, which is the magic part, uh, was a dream. So we uh, decided that we had conditions in 98 to, to invest in, in, uh, in the interior, in a place where there were no vineyards. Uh, but in one of the most important uh, wine regions uh, in the world uh, uh, from Portugal, which is uh, basically Alentejo and Douro. Uh, so obviously uh, Alentejo, we, the choice was Alentejo because it's closer to the Algarve. Uh, so that was, was one of the regions and because uh, it's an amazing um, rural <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Uh, place uh, where the nature is completely uh, almost untouched so we fell in love with the region I was born actually I was born in Lisbon my my husband and his family his brother because it's a it's a, a project between us us three uh, they were born near Lisbon as well so we went to the Algarve when we were younger with our parents And uh, to go to Alentejo, to the south of the, the Alentejo, close to the Algarve, was not very difficult. Uh, and to start something from scratch, because we bought a an ab an, uh, property abandoned for more than uh, 30 years with no water or vineyards or electricity or anything. So it, it was really a question of, uh, of uh, dedication, work, work and passion. Uh, like you said, uh, Melhadinha looks like uh, an, uh, something really big, but um, it, is, uh, it all started because of the wine. So we started planting the vineyards in, in 2001 and we built the winery. The tourism was something that we wanted to, to, to bring, uh, to, to, to invest because the, the property had some uh, abandoned houses and we wanted to bring them new life to the houses. So we wanted to recover the houses. So we started with the wine. Uh, that was the most important thing. We planted the vineyard and opened the winery in 2003 and started selling the wines and started making all the commercial um, development of the wine in Portugal and abroad. So we were, obviously, we wanted since the beginning to make the brand international. So uh, we did all the commercial uh, uh, wine, international wine fairs. And we, uh, at the moment, we, we distribute our wines 
uh, for 25 countries. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a small production. It's, uh, everything is very, very artisanal. We, in all the property, which is 450 hectares, we are organic. Uh, in every one of the activities. So it's wine, agriculture. We breed uh, um, autochthon uh, uh, species of animals as, as cow and black pig. We have the olive oil also. It's uh, olive trees completely um, organic. Everything is organic. And we started with, uh, with the, the first um, uh, phase of the tourism in 2008. 2008 when we opened a small charming hotel with 10 rooms mm -hmm. but in the property we still had uh, some abandoned houses and in 2008 we decided to invest uh, a little bit more and to recover all the rest of the houses that were abandoned so today we have recovered all the houses we have brought life to the property uh, of course, we have been making a very, very important commercial um, uh, work in, also internationally with the tourism, with lots of uh, partnerships and, um, and uh, we are uh, very well recognized in Portugal and, and all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's something really unique because the, the, the nature is really wild. And because we more than than um, than selling rooms, like uh, Melly was saying as well, more than selling rooms or selling uh, wine, we sell experiences. We mm -hmm. sell the place. We sell space. We we sell we sell time. We sell a way of living. That's what we want to share. That's what that's what we want the, uh, people to come and experience at at Melodinha. So it's a very diverse project. Mm -hmm. um, all about agriculture as well, but about tourism and about a way of living that we want to to leave a legacy and to and to girl and to permit that others can experience, right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We we were talking we we are talking about three different businesses that are um, based in rural areas, but uh, that from from which uh, technology are enablers to because. Technology always permits that these three businesses grow. So, uh, Berta, how can we guarantee that technology is always um, there? And how can we, how can you guarantee also that people can use this technology um, for the better? Thank you very much, Mariana. I think you're asking extremely relevant questions, um, and and both of them are actually. I hope I will have the the, the uh, possibility to explain it briefly. But um, uh, you were you were asking how can we guarantee that technology is actually there, right? That it works. Um, I think 2020 is the year that has shown us actually that has reminded us of how important technology is, right? Because for us, it's it was almost for granted, right? You open your smartphone, you talk to your whoever, no, your parents, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your your friends, doesn't matter. And it's always there. And then you get your laptop and you try to work and it's also always there. However, um, you know, we are in the middle, of course, of a global pandemic. And I recall that everyone was quite shocked, right? When this all started and we all had to work from home and sharing networks and then the, the, the net networks sometimes were over capacity and so on and so forth. Um, I cannot emphasize enough the work that, for example, um, Huawei engineers have been doing uh, during these months to keep up uh, the connectivity to actually make sure that we can, you know, call our loved ones or reply to an email from work, for instance, no? So I think that their work has been really valuable. And again, it has reminded us of how important this is. But you were you were saying, and I think in order to connect um, um, your, your, your very relevant question um, to the rural topic, um, I would like to 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 go back to the to the because I think that uh, real life cases right are the ones that represent uh, better what we actually want to achieve. And I was listening very closely to all our participants, and I actually uh, was paying attention to what Amelia uh, was saying. You know the the reasons why she chose uh, to have her business in a particular region and not in another one, right? 
um, one of us, okay, was transport and so on and so forth, accessibility, and other one definitely was connectivity. Um, so connectivity now is not only becoming a, a daily kind of basis of our lives, it's also, I think, warranting our rights, right? So whenever you now want to access education or continue working, or even we're talking about telemedicine, for this you need connectivity. So connectivity in itself, access to good connectivity is becoming a sort of a, a right in itself, right? Um, and the world is definitely changing. This pandemic is teaching us that value will not anymore be created in the traditional sense, right? Like uh, which country has the biggest car factory or uh, so on and so forth, no? Um, I am thinking, for instance, uh, just to give you, because uh, we are doing this, right, from a European perspective. So imagine, let's go to, from Lisbon, right, um, to Bulgaria at the other end of the EU. I was also lucky to be there as part of our uh, um, um, rural connectivity projects um, a few months ago, actually. And I was very, very uh, positively surprised by how fast um, the internet was in rural Bulgaria. Okay. Okay. Now, a spoiler here, it's not only because Huawei was, was building the network, but actually it was, it was surprisingly high speed. And I say this from Brussels, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what is happening now? It's exactly what Amelia was saying. When you look at entrepreneurs, at ICT professionals, at so-called digital nomads, right? Mm -hmm. Why are they looking for all these people who are creating immense value? They're looking for good connectivity. And in a way, you know, this is very good for the sustainability of the planet itself. We had regions and in, in, in Portugal, well, and in my country, of course, in Spain, we had regions that were at risk of depopulating even mm -hmm. entirely. In Bulgaria, for instance, they experienced that. But now with a good connectivity, they actually have reasons to attract um, all these people again, all these people that are usually young, that are going to dynamize these areas, right? That are going to hopefully stay, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully uh, create families, hopefully invest as well um, on the local ecosystem. Having said this, I have to admit that I have forgotten your second question. <laughs> I, I was I, I was thinking about what, while you were talking. I I was thinking about this. If if we can consider uh, other, of course of course it's a bad it's a bad um, era and it's a bad time. Um, of course the year was very very difficult and very very challenging. But can we see this pandemic uh, as like a gift to rural areas because? in a way we can see rural areas as an opportunity to grow our businesses and to change our lives in a way. Isabel, mm -hmm. what do you think about it? Uh, we have to be careful because this, this yes, pandemic, of course, uh, brings a lot of suffer and, and, and many people uh, have their, their, their opportunities uh, very, very compromised. So, mm -hmm. Uh, despite of, uh, of this, it is true that uh, the interior of Portugal, the rural areas, for example, have been observed more carefully and there was an opportunity for everybody to know better these, these territories. And uh, I, I was listening to all of you and I, I, I conclude that uh, each people can make a difference. And uh, it is the same pattern. We have, uh, it is important to have ideas. It is important to, to have a strategy. It is important to go for the, for the resources and many, many work. Uh, I think this is the most important and following this, each person, uh, each people can make a difference. And, uh, it is very important to highlight that one of our priorities has to be with no doubt to improve our living standards and reduce all these territorial disparities and all these differences between big cities and rural environment. And also businesses is, 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 an, is an opportunity to do this because this is possible through the creation of, of job opportunities and provision of essential services, of course, such as because when we are talking about uh, searching for connectivity uh, within these, we, we mean uh, 
uh, the access of healthcare, of childcare, of education, of uh, universities. So it is important to, to increase all this social society functionality with, with, with all these services and better transport services. But most important is to, to create jobs, qualified jobs, people that, that is creative. Uh, and we have to support all these business opportunities, the company's expansion, the innovative investment, the internship uh, dynamics, the research technology, as you mentioned, is very important. And it's very important to stimulate mobility of people to these low populated regions. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the huge the huge opportunity of the inland of Portugal with with all the traditional endogenous resources uh, is very important but but we have to add to this also the landscape the hospitality the authenticity uh, the culture the the gastronomy uh, and we have to start linking better the rural the peri urban the urban resources uh, this is very important. Uh, with technology, uh, we also have uh, industry in these in this territories. It's not only uh, agriculture or forest. We also have industry. We have uh, companies from a technological base. Uh, and this is very important to, to complete uh, value chains and also to achieve unique and high added value products, as as you mentioned before, and we can we, we can find many examples of well succeeded farmers, technology based companies, uh, scientists, uh, and people that that create innovative or or disruptive business opportunities, as as my colleagues here today. And uh, this can really change the territories and, and inspired us, inspired us every day. Today, we, our cities, our villages must be sustainable, must be creative, must be innovative and must be intelligent. And for that, we have to, 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 capacity, to, to, to join capacity, to join uh, qualified people to, to do this. this uh, yes this reality and to change the local the local economy mm -hmm. yeah and the local the local universe i mean because because when you have technology as a as an enabler to to grow businesses and to grow projects in rural areas as you have in uh, urban more urban areas you can you can build uh, a country with uh, less uh, inequities and with less differences between people and between between business women and men, right? Because you have uh, you have all the um, all the the things that you that you need to to build your business uh, wherever you want. So it's not it's not uh, a lack of uh, freedom when you have to when you have to to choose uh, a region uh, and not another one because you don't have connectivity enough to do it or um, uh, for, for the entrepreneurs, and the last question is, um, uh, when you create your businesses, you, you thought about the impact uh, you, can, you can do locally and globally, because when you have technology, when you have this capacity to, to tell your story and to build your business from wherever, uh, wherever you want, you you can you can impact your community and you can impact the world also. So, uh, did you thought did you thought about it, Amelia? You can start, I guess. I think we we ended up uh, thinking about it when we decided to establish in, in in the Algarve because we felt the project itself could have a bigger impact in the Algarve than it could probably have in in Lisbon or or in Porto in one of the, the option the other options we had at at the time. I think it's it's true and it's very interesting when when we started the business and we launched the brand four years ago. We started receiving a lot of awards internationally. We started uh, receiving recommendation from brands like Bang & Olufsen, like Kef, like Bowers & Wilkins. And it was quite interesting because at the beginning, um, they, they, 
uh, they didn't know where we were coming from, that we were coming from Portugal, and especially close to the sea. So a lot of people recognized the Algarve as a nice location for, for holidays and for tourism. And it was kind of a nice surprise uh, when, when they found out that that was the consumer electronics brand, a high-end brand on, on Hi-Fi being done in Portugal. And it's very interesting that every review that we get um, from the press or mentioned somewhere, they always end up talking about the Portuguese so the, we, we ended up having that, that tag and, uh, uh, and, and it's, it's good to see Portugal recognized for other things. And we have great businesses internally. And I think the image of the country itself is, is changing. Um, and what I find, uh, the, the beauty that I find in places, more rural places, is that they actually have the ability to diversify. So you can have businesses such as great businesses like Rita or Luisa have, uh, which is very hard to build in a city, right? The city is no longer built for those types of things. Mm -hmm. And if you allow those areas to have then other types of businesses to diversify, to bring technology, to bring the digital nomads, to start building different ecosystems around them, they, ha they have better opportunities of creating great spaces to live, even better than the big hubs in the big cities. Yeah. It's a win-win situation, right? Because it's a win-win situation if we can achieve something like that. And there's a lot of territory to explore uh, and, and to build that as long as we have the connectivity and the same type of conditions that you have on a bigger city. And, and the pandemic crisis has been terrible in, in lots of, of aspects from a health perspective, from economic perspective. Mm -hmm. And the Algarve has suffered a lot because a lot of the activities in the Algarve are tourism-based. So it has been terrible for, for the region. And the, 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 the small light at, at the end of the tunnel that, that helped is, is actually the fact that people are starting to find more normal to do meetings like this remotely, to, um, to, have, uh, uh, to work remotely. Uh, as, as a matter of fact. And one of the things that we feel whenever we try to recruit people from uh, the big cities or from abroad, because we have an international team, a lot of the time they have families and the challenge is what my other half will do when we move to the Algarve. And if we start allowing people to have uh, other options, if we start diversifying in terms of businesses, that's great because then you can start bringing whole families and developing that ecosystem in, in different places, not only in, in the big cities. So I think that's, that's a, big, um, a big plus uh, for, for rural places to, to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I don't know if you, ha if you have anything to add on the discussion, but uh, if not, I think it's a, it's a great way to, to finish this with this uh, testimonial from Amelia. And uh, yeah, my last sentence is, I think uh, it will be rural is the new cool because it is. Because it is. <laughs> so uh, anything to add? That's yeah. perfect. That final sentence, it's perfect. We, we can also say not only the new cool, but the new luxury, because I keep saying Very that. True. That nature, in my case, nature, uh, space and time and believing in uh, the uniqueness of a certain place uh, and respect the tradition, the culture and everything about that place, which was my, my, my case here at Medellinia, very poor region, very poor place. Uh, the less populated, like I said, it's really about believing, about uh, bringing stories, bringing the culture back, and leaving a legacy. So that's we what we are doing at at Mediadinha in Alentejo in this amazing and unique uh, unique region. So not only the new cool, uh, but for mm -hmm. sure the new luxury. Uh, if I can say something, yes, uh, yeah, just to. Uh, I think it's 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 really the, the new luxury, the, the, the country, the, the, the rural side side uh, life. But uh, also, I think when people can um, can uh, can live more close to the rural uh, area or life, they can they can they will respect more the nature. And uh, this is really important that people can respect the nature and be more. 
uh, where to, what we can do to have a better world. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, it's in the rural areas are, are, is where um, we can feel it more and we can feel more for the best and we, we can feel it more for the, the world, the worst. Uh, and um, we can feel that uh, we are uh, making good things uh, and we also can feel that we are making bad things. So uh, if we go more to the, to the rural, rural world, uh, you can, you can um, understand that uh, uh, nature, nature needs uh, to be more respected and more cared and more loved. It's That's a good it. level of connectivity, I guess. <laughs> Mariana, would you yeah, allow yeah. me to say just one thing? <laughs> Very brief this time, I promise. Um, I just wanted to say that indeed, rural is a new cool, and that uh, from Huawei, we actually want 2021 to be the year of European rural connectivity. So we trust on Portugal to actually bring this concept forward. And you guys, uh, you know, Portugal as a country is excellently well positioned to do this because of your sense for territorial cohesion, like Madam Secretary of State was saying, for equality, for inclusion. So please do this. Uh, Europe needs more of Portugal. I would say this is always the case and it's also the case in rural connectivity. Obrigada. Obrigada. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. um, you five uh, incredible women. Mm -hmm. And I hope you we, we can see, um, see you soon. So thank you so much and have a great weekend. <laughs> thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.